So what's going on guys, welcome back to Gabriel Gaprod. Today we are going to see how to create a 2D water shader. And as you can see it has some cool reflections, it has caustics going on, it also has a shoreline and it can be used as a river, why not? It's a pretty cool trick and it can add a nice touch to your scenes. And as usual this is available on my Patreon page, in case you are interested I left the link in the description. You will get access to many effects and shaders that you can use in your games and in your projects. So with that being said, let's jump right into it and let's see how we can create this one. So before we proceed, I just need to mention to you that I'm using 2019.4 in URP, Universal Render Pipeline, and I am using the 2D render, which is very simple to create. All you gotta do is with right click, go to create and in rendering, you will find 2D render. Then all you need to do is assign this 2D render to your Universal Render Pipeline asset up here. If you don't find your Universal Render Pipeline asset, you can go to Edit and in Project Settings, go to Graphics and if you click right here it will show where your Universal Render Pipeline asset is. Right, so once that is done, don't forget to go to the Package Manager and install Shader Graph in case you don't have it. And by the way, this is Syra from the Lost Script demo. Why? Well, I don't know. Anyway, moving on, we can go ahead and create a shader in 2D render. You can create a sprite lit graph. And lit means it will be influenced by 2D lights, which is quite useful. So once we open this 2D water shader, the first thing we need is to add a texture, a 2D texture, which is going to be used for the render texture. And what is this render texture? This render texture is basically what the camera is seeing. And since we cannot use a scene color node in Shader Graph, we need a render texture. And it's very simple to create. With right click, we can create a render texture right here. And I'm going to insert the resolution of my screen. You can use almost any value, I just recommend that you use a power of 2 resolution. Otherwise you may have some problems once Unity tries to loop this texture. The next thing we need is another camera, because as you can see in our main camera we have down here the output and we can assign in fact our render texture. But we won't see anything in our game. So we need another camera and we can duplicate this main camera. I'm gonna empower it from Syrah. I'm gonna call it the render cam. And now down here we can assign the render texture. Next we can already go ahead and create a sprite. And in this sprite I'm going to assign a square. It's a very basic square that I've created in Photoshop. Basically this is it. Let me just push this forward so we can see it. And I'm gonna shrink it down, alright. And once we go back to our shader, we can assign the render texture to our texture 2D property. Just like this. This is the one. We can drag and drop it, create a sample texture 2D node, and connect this to the color input. As soon as we save this, we need to create a material out of this shader so we can apply it to our water sprite. Just like this. And what you are seeing here is normal. It is projecting what the camera is seeing into our sprite infinitely. So what we can do is push this down here. And I'm going to scale this just a little bit like this for now. Okay, cool. Now as you may notice we need to flip this image. So we can have a proper reflection. So we can have a proper reflection effect. For that we are going to need a tiling and offset node that we can connect to our sample to extra 2D and if we want to invert this all we gotta do is set the minus 1 in the Y. Or at least that should work. Why it isn't working? Well because our render texture needs to have the wrap mode set to repeat and it only works if we set the anti-aliasing to two samples at least. And now we can invert our image correctly with our tiling. But we still may need the offset to push this down or up as we wish. 
So let's go ahead and create two vector2 properties, one for the water tiling and the other for the water offset. Let's connect them respectively. The water tiling is going to be one in the X and Y. And we will see how this is working in our scene in just a moment. Let's go ahead and create our caustics. For that, we have a very simple node called Voronoi that will be extremely useful. Once we create this node, we can connect it to a power node. And if we play with the B value, we have caustics. And if we multiply this with a tiny value, we can add this information to our tiling and offset. And once we replace the connection to the render texture, we will have distortion automatically. And it's as simple as this. It may not be very noticeable, but once we increase this number, we can see it distorting. Right, so let's create some properties so we can have control over this in the inspector. And the first one is going to be a vector one for the refraction amount, which is going to be connected right here. And it's going to have a very small value like 0 0.2 for now. Next, let me just close this. Well, next we can use another vector one to control the caustics power, basically this value, the amount of caustics we want. With a default value of around nine, should be enough. And we are going to add a few more properties in a moment. But as you may notice, this is static. This doesn't move at all. And anytime we want to make something move in shader terms, we use a time node, and then we can create a vector two for the caustic speed that is going to be multiplied with the time node. Once we do that, we can use the tiling and offset node and connect this to the offset. And then just like this, connect it to the Voronoi and we have movement, our caustics are moving. Right, so that's pretty cool, but, so that's pretty cool, right, but our caustics are still a little bit too static. So thankfully with the Voronoi node, we have the angle offset that we can animate by multiplying once again the time node with another vector one, which we can call caustics movement, for example. And if we connect it to the angle offset, nothing happens because we need to increase the caustics movement. If we set it to two, we are able to see a nice movement. Maybe it's a bit too fast, but we will control that in the inspector. Right, so those are some nice caustics, as you will see in a moment. Let's just add a vector one to control the caustic scale, and that's it. Let's in fact save this shader and go to the inspector and adjust these values. So first thing is the water tiling. We need to invert this, so minus one in the Y, just like this. You can control the offset right here, if you want this to be closer to our player. You know, it's really up to you. And for now, let's also increase the caustic scale, something like this. If you want, you can play with the refraction amount too. And you can also make the caustic speed a little bit slower. Anyway, as you may notice, we don't have any color in our ripples and we cannot control the color of our water. So let's fix that. So first we want to add a color property for the water color. You can set it to HDR mode and white. What matters is that you drag and drop this and multiply it with the sample texture 2D, just like this. Okay, so for the color of the ripples, we want to push a line from this power and multiply it with another color property. Let me just push this up here, right here, organizing this is very important. And then add another color property for the caustics color, also in HDR mode, with white as default if you want. And then connect this to the multiply. And now we want to add this to the output of the multiply and replace the connection to the color. Once we save this and go back to our scene, we have control over the color. For example, we can set it to a nice blue and we can also play with the intensity, which is pretty cool. 
And then for the watercolor, we can add some transparency by decreasing the alpha, for example. And then we can add a nice touch of blue or any other color that you like. Right, so we are starting to see something down here. Those are some nice caustics and a nice distortion as well. Alright, so then we can add a few more things, like for example, a shoreline, which is pretty easy. We can use a UV node. If we split this and use the green channel connected to a power, we have control over the shoreline length. Then if we add this to what comes out of this multiply, we will have our shoreline added to our pipeline. Let's just add a vector one so we can control the shoreline length. Let's leave it at 13 for default. And then we can also control the color of our shoreline with another color property. Just organize this a little bit. Okay. And multiply the shoreline color with the power node. And then replace the connection to the add. Right, so if we save this, we can now control the intensity and choose a bluish color for the shoreline. You know, it's really up to your taste. If we increase this, we can then control the scale of the caustics. And for example, if I push back the foreground that I had here, it starts to look like a river. Right, but the one that I made previously looks much better, right? And why is that? Well, mostly because of the motion of the caustics, but the offset has also a very important role. In my case, 0 0.2 looks better, for example. Then if I increase the caustic speed in the X to a negative value like 0 0.1, now it starts looking like a river. Another thing that I use is the sprite shape, which gives us control of the shape of the square, basically. But there's a problem. If I push this too much to one side, it will repeat the texture and we will see a cut right in the middle. I have searched on how to disable the sprite shape repetition or something that would allow us to stretch this as far as we wanted without repetition, but without success. As it is now, Unity hasn't added any option to control the repetition of the sprite shape. Which is a shame, it would look really awesome, this water shader, with the sprite shape. But in case you are interested to use the sprite shape, you can go to Package Manager, install it here, and then with right click, down here you will have the sprite shape profile, create one, and right here in the sprites list, we can add one, I'm gonna choose the square, And then all you gotta do is with right click, go to 2D object and down here you have sprite shape. And then we can drag and drop the sprite shape profile we have created. You can turn on is open ended. And in the edge material, you can add the water shader. Then it's all about editing the spline. And if you select all of these points, you can choose this tangent mode, so it becomes smoother. And then you can control the height, if it is thicker or thinner. Then it's all about adjusting this shape. And that's it, it looks really, really awesome. It's just a shame that we cannot disable the repetition of sprite shape. Let's hope one day Unity adds that feature. So that's basically it, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. As usual, this is all made possible thanks to my patrons, which I'm super thankful for them. And a special shout out goes to the Super Mega Patrons, which are Alejandro, Angel R. Dev, Show James, Dodolo, Amantas, Goblin Plague, Hero Syndrome The Game, Himera SPC, John Nix, Josh McCormick, Ram and Yola, Ken Lee, Luo Chang Chen, Lorenzo Gnek, Marco Rossi, Nikolai Slodus, Psychotech Studios, Robin Boudreau, Silvio Fumé, Steven Melton, TK, Xor. You guys are awesome, you guys rock. So that's it, thanks for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed and I really hope to see you in the next one.